This video showcases a conversation that I had with one of the team members from Halborn. If you aren't familiar, Halborn is a company that I've been chatting with a bit recently, and they focus on the security of Web3 technologies and blockchain protocols and all the stuff that really makes up cryptocurrency. And it is a fascinating thing to me because I don't know a whole lot about that whole world. I'll be the first to admit. But they focus on the security of all this, the cybersecurity, the vulnerabilities, the exploits, the hacks. And I think it's crazy cool because when you find an issue or a security security flaw or anything in that realm, it could literally mean millions of dollars lost. So I'm fascinated by it. I'm interested in how that all works. And I want to chat more about them. If you have any interest, Halborn is growing what they're doing. Uh, if you want to go take a look at this same video, it's also uploaded and available on Halborn's channel. So hey, honestly, please go show them some love and go check it out on their channel. But I want to re-upload it here so it is accessible and visible for more people. So hey, I hope you enjoy some cool conversations on the security of Solar. Lana, one of these blockchain and Web3 protocols. Enjoy. Well, hey, Piotr, thank you so, so much uh, for being willing to chat for a little bit. My name is John Hammond. Uh, I'm honored to be hanging out with all of you at Halborn uh, here. Finally get to meet you in person, which is super exciting. Uh, but do you mind, just for, I guess, my own understanding, to get me in, the, in, the, in on the loop, uh, who are you? What are you up to? What are you doing in Halborn? What do you focus on, et cetera? Uh, the floor is yours, my friend. <laughs> thanks, thanks, John. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be here and uh, having a chat with you. So. Uh, my name is Piotr. I'm uh, the Solana practice manager at Halborn. So what that means, I uh, I'm an auditor and I manage uh, the Solana team uh, that consists of uh, several engineers, and uh, we're focused on uh, smart contract, which in Solana are called program audits. Uh, white box audits to that and what we also do is we uh, develop and uh, come up with tools that can both help uh, our work internally and uh, make the community more secure and you know uh, kind of uh, unravel the mystery of uh, you know smart contract and blockchain security uh, in, in general. I love it because I come like from the traditional quote unquote, and I put that in air quotes, traditional cybersecurity with malware and hackers and Active Directory and all that shenanigans, right? But the whole Web3 or blockchain world is completely new to me. <laughs> uh, so I'll be totally upfront and honest with that. So Solana, right? If that's your bread and butter, is it totally cool? Would you mind giving me just, hey, how do you explain, how do you tell people what Solana is? What is it you do in your own words? Like in your own definition, what is Solana and how does that come to life in, in Web3 and blockchain? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm, I'm just gonna uh, base uh, whatever I'm going to say now on the Solana white paper, because sure. uh, 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 it gives like the most detailed description of, of, the, of the thing. So Solana claims to be the first scalable proof of stake blockchain. Now, what that means if, is um, it can scale with the number of um, participating nodes, which are called validators. Intuitively, you might think the more people use it, the better it is, the, the, the faster it is, the more performant it is, which is not really the case because it's a, it's a decentralized system. So all the nodes have to talk to each other. And when I'm talking to you, this is a direct conversation, but if we were to talk to you know uh, 1000 people in this room and just you know introduce ourselves, it would take us you know the better part of of the morning to to do that. Oh yeah. So Solana is trying to solve this problem by you know uh, introducing several key innovations that you know drive the performance way above anything that we have now. So uh, the Solana white paper argues that uh, the the network is capable of processing seven hundred thousand uh, transactions per second on on a one gigabit network. Now. Just to put it in some sort of context, Bitcoin does five transactions per second. Wow. Ethereum does like 15 on average. And Visa, which is the most performant centralized system, so much easier to manage and uh, arguably much easier to implement because centralized systems has been with us for like, you know, close to 50 years now, uh, can process up to 24,000 uh, 
transactions per second. It it it's like it can it does not, it doesn't like on a daily basis, but it's capable of doing that. So like if you compare the most performance centralized system with twenty four k, and then you have Solana with a seven hundred k, and this is a limit that you know as technology develops, as the networks as networks get even more faster, uh, more performant, and hardware gets better because that's that's another thing that's Solana Solana scales with. So as hardware gets better so does solana so you know it's 700k and we can we you know it's it's capable of doing it now but you know who knows what's gonna happen you know in five years or a bit further down the road so uh i think that's i think it solves a really big problem that troubles uh, many of the blockchains that we know um we, that we know now that's awesome it's someone that i i feel like i've l- I probably have played with a little bit more so than any of the others just because, hey, that transaction speed is fantastic. I believe gas fees, is that right? They're practically minimal uh, for just being able to play, just being able to like, hey, let a newcomer understand and, and try to tinker with this. What does that look like to you? Is that on the command line, hey, mint and tokens, is that carving through Rust? Is that carving through Solidity? Or is that is that strictly a different one? What, I guess, languages and tooling and tool chains allow you to really do what you do for your day job in Solana? So like Solana initially was co- was uh, written in C uh, because like Solana is try to be a decentralized operating systems and like most operating systems are written in a low level language C for example but now but then the they made a transition to Rust because Rust is a, a memory safe uh, language and memory uh, related attacks are a big thing in C if yeah. if, if if you don't do it right and uh, Rust is, uh, you know, by definition, uh, secure from that. And uh, unless you explicitly write code that's in a block that's literally titled unsafe, um, you're not gonna end up having memory uh, corruption issues. So the whole blockchain is written in in, in Rust. Um, you can write smart contracts, which are which are just pieces of software that run on blockchain. Um, you can also write them in Rust. You can also write them in C because what they are translated to, what is actually being executed, is something that's called a BPF, which is uh, which is an abbreviation for Berkeley Packet Filter, mm. and this was originally created as a technology that. Uh, as a language, as, a, as a, that's basically assembly that's executed in Linux kernel. So uh, uh, you know you don't want to execute uh, you know uh, untrusted or you know malicious stuff in your kernel. You wanna because it's the highest privilege you have uh, in Linux. So you wanna ideally you wanna make it as performant and as secure as it is. So uh, Solana be trying to be the uh, a decentralized uh, operating system. Also you know uh, learn the lesson from from Linux and how to handle uh, BPF. So. Uh, uh, so, so, so like uh, you can you can you know compile C uh, to BPF. You can compile Rust to BPF. So Solana has uh, their own uh, BPF toolchain that is uh, used in, uh, in in compile time to translate the high level language. Like that's a funny distinction because like you translate high level language to low level language, but <laughs> but, uh, but 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 then uh, Rust is also like low level compared to right. Python or say JavaScript. So what on principle like if it's human readable and it's not like you know just uh, uh, random bytes you call it high level so it translates high level language to low level language that understandable by machines which which bpf uh, technically yes now uh, the cl so so solana um, tools solana cli that's extremely user friendly they have a full suite of tools uh, for basically any sort of you know uh, application you need so you can mint tokens you can check uh, the balance of your account you can uh, you know query uh, the chain to to like you know get any sort of data that exists on chain you can get it via the cli now uh, you might need uh, you know some extra steps extra steps after you get the data to understand it because Ultimately, it's just you know it's just bytes. Uh, so you have to uh, you have to translate it to 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 whatever you're expecting. So uh, 
even like Solana CLI is great, but there are some extra steps that you have to take yourself in order to understand what the chain is uh, telling you, because uh, it's always gonna tell you the truth. You just have to, you know, you just have to know how to understand uh, this truth. Uh, so uh, just a few more words about the CLI. So uh, uh, the. Mm, uh, it's, it's just as easy as uh, running a bash script to yeah. download the whole uh, CLI um, uh, suite. And it consists of like, you know, literally hundreds of commands, um, which are also extremely performant because one, they're written in Rust and two, they're using Solana, which uh, claims to be the most performant blockchain in the world. So it's like all about speed and uh, um, gas fees uh, that, you, that, you, that you mentioned play really nicely into this narrative because like if you think of 700 transactions per second uh, 700,000 transactions per second like each if, if a transaction costs a buck it, it it's a it, it's a it's a lot of money moving around so Solana because of all these uh, you know optimizations and innovations they managed somehow to uh, decrease the fees to like basically peanuts so that they are actually pretty much free to be honest so uh, one thing that you know uh, is uh, is uh, is a consequence of that is that many nft projects migrated or they're building on solana rather than say ethereum because of uh, the gas fees which are practically non-existent on the chain whereas it's like the biggest you know uh, deal breaker in, in in solidity because you 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 need you know some investment up front to to, to to make it work and either as a creator or or, or as a user uh, you know you you end up paying uh, quite uh, you know say relatively a lot to the miners uh, whereas in Solana there is a very 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 little upfront cost but as you as you're using it you even you, you stop noticing it that's so interesting to me because again I, I hear you go you mentioned hey you, obviously that command line interface is extremely friendly but at its core this is the low level thing like rust it's boiling itself down to burly packet filters like a hardcore assembled operating system decentralized stuff uh it's very very cool to hear about that duality in my mind i'm curious what you as an auditor right tend to look for uh, obviously offensive security engineer obviously trying to hack and, and trying to find the flaws and the weaknesses and the misconfigurations in what is kind of proposed like proposed to be right hey some some very secure thing what is it that you might be hunting down if it's a vulnerability or if it's an if it's a weakness if it's a flaw what are the things that you your eyes light up when you find it if i may ask is there any road to drive down with that one uh, so uh, like uh, i guess i'll try and explain it uh, on an example that we all know so like basic basic web application so like imagine you have a web application that is sitting on a linux uh, server say apache uh, so uh, you know that if you have an apache unless you're you know uh, uh, unless you you don't want to unless you're a really um, uh, you know um, alternative guy you're gonna go for linux so if you see right. apache it's probably gonna sit on linux so say so this application uh, doesn't mean what it does it processes some data so it has some business logic implement it might not even have to be business it does not have to make any money but like any logic that's implemented it's called business logic because it's like serve some purpose so uh, if you're trying to have so say it's a white box audit so you have access to the source code because we do uh, because like blockchain on um, principle is a public thing everybody can participate uh, with equal rights so it only makes sense to provide a uh, source among multiple other reasons to provide the source code to the auditors so uh, say you say you have access to the source code of the web application and there are like uh, to me there are like three types three three main categories of vulnerabilities uh, i would look for so the first one is obviously business logic is there like a flow that you can you know break or you know are there any steps in the processing that you can bypass you can take you know like a like a shorter path rather than you know going the happy way so that's one the other is the, this web application it's it is written in some language whether it is you know uh, javascript rust uh, php uh, like we all know 
languages have you know uh, their differences and what uh, what it implies there are different vulnerabilities that vulnerabilities that stem solely from the fact that a web application is written in this language and not the other say in c we know that we have to be really careful with handling memory as and, and, and buffers and things and overflows really low level stuff which it's not going to be the case in say python because python abstracts all that you know low level magic for you uh, so you don't have to worry about that but there are you know say if you're using flask there are some you know serialization issues so which is not going to be an issue in c because there is no flask in c uh, so that's something that's specific to python but not to c so there's the, the there's this uh, language uh, vulnerability uh, class and the third one is because the web server is sitting on some sort of operating system, it most likely interacts with the system in some way, whether it is, you know, uh, OS or file system kind of, you know, um, interaction. Uh, so uh, if, uh, you know, if a web application is creating files, you'll gonna you, you want to try and abuse uh, this uh, th this flow if you can create a file that's too big or you can you know uh, request a file that you should not have access to or you can you know delete a resource and it, this this works differently on you know uh, open bsd this is the interaction is somewhat different on linux on windows on uh, mac os so this is the third class of vulnerabilities you have to uh, look for and as blockchain is uh, also ha I believe ha has all th those three classes of, of vulnerabilities. That's what I am looking for. So if I have a um an exchange uh, DAP, which is a decentralized application, um, I will be looking for you know uh, errors in uh, in business code. I will be on business logic. I'll be uh, looking for errors in how the protocol, the blockchain features uh, are used. So I'll also be looking at you know language specific vulnerabilities. If it's you know uh, Rust or Solidity, th those guys have different types of you know language specifics uh, to them. So um, it's it, it's like a starting point obviously it's not a you know like a um, you know uh, how to hack an app because like each app is somewhat different than the right. previous one there are similarities and you can and you obviously learn from um, um your previous work but uh, you, you always have to understand the protocol to the core to know where the vulnerabilities might be that's cool i would think the severity of the flaw, like how, how, what the impact that could come probably increases as you get lower and lower in that, those three tiers that you just kind of gave me, right? Like, hey, obviously an operating system, low level thing is probably gonna be more dangerous than an authentication bypass or quote unquote for a business logic thing, right? Has there been some earth shattering, crazy shenanigans, big incident like that? I, I, I might be naive here, but I think, oh, we saw the Solana network kind of go down. Is that fair to say? What's shaken up if there is something going on? So, uh, so, so, um, I guess it was just a couple of days ago. Right. So, yeah, Solana went offline. This is, well, the whole network halted for uh, several hours, mm -hmm. and that was due to a uh, mining, uh, minting bot. So, like, an NFT project got really popular in the community so someone just wrote a bot that kept spamming the network with uh, transactions wow. and uh, I, I mentioned that Solana theoretically can handle 700 uh, K TPS but it was supposed to like the bot expected it to handle for a million uh, TPS, mm. a, a number that's inconceivable even in centralized system. Maybe in CERN in Geneva they do that, but like I don't really believe you know uh, most web servers can handle this sort of traffic. Uh, so that's what brought it down. So like. Uh, uh, Solana uh, advertises its uh, mainnet because that's also the thing about blockchains. They also they always have several um, instances of uh, the network. So you have the mainnet, so the like the um, the production environment. You have a development environment. You have test net, uh, which is just for testing. And th those may uh, vary uh, between each other in features, because the so experimental features are first introduced to the test net, then they make their way to dev net. And then finally, uh, if they are battle tested or the community decides uh, they're battle tested enough, they make uh, their way to the mainnet. So Solana advertises their mainnet as uh, still in beta. So if you've ever 
worked with anything in a better version of, of, of anything, you know it's bound to have bugs and right. you know uh, all different kinds of stuff that, that, that is unexpected may happen. So I think that's, that's, that's what's happening. A thing that we have to keep in mind is that Solana is a really new uh, thing and, and it came to life, I think, uh, in 2020. So it's, to be honest, a little over a year old now and the first solana conference was in uh, was last year in, wow. in november uh, so uh, it's it's, uh, it's it's still it's in infancy and uh, i am I'm, I'm i'm i hope that all the issues that you know that trouble it will be resolved as they are discovered because like this is the thing with software um there are so many you know applications there are so many you know ways users can interact with it and some projects even fail by succeeding so they get to a kind of what i believe happened right now so solana failed by succeeding because they attract it attracted so much you know interest from people uh, from the nft space that all those people that previously were on ethereum they moved on to uh Solana. Now, the other thing that might have gone wrong is that, like the, you know, uh, API 101 is rate limiting. So if you run a server, ideally you don't want to, um, uh, you know, accept too much traffic in order, you know, for your server not to, you know, just burst into flames. So uh, that's one thing that might have been, you know, um, improved, I believe. So like if you have a node and it accepts transactions, you might want to like limit uh, the number of requests you're uh, you're, you're, you're accepting because uh, like if it applies in traditional security and traditional you know server uh, maintenance I also believe it like in in, a, in some way it can also be applied and should be applied to blockchain as well because ultimately it's external data that you have to handle uh, in some way so the, this bot I remember you mentioning, hey, succeed or fail by succeeding, right? The, the bot was not some uh, intended adversarial threat actor, malicious actor wanting to take it down. It was it was by the nature of, hey, we had a lot of success with this potential token. Is that am I understanding that right? Um, I, I, I might be a bit uh, fuzzy on the details. OK, but, totally no worries. Yeah, but what I what what I believe is it the intention was not malicious mm. like it was malicious in the sense that somebody wanted to be first to mint the token so, Fair enough. so somebody was just you know smarter than the other people so they just wanted to take advantage of that and just spam the network with transactions and i don't know if they managed to mint the nft they managed to bring the network down which is an achievement of sorts but i don't really know if that's the outcome they were you know hoping gotcha for. gotcha Are things like that some things that are, in your mind, seem almost trivial or still complex? Or I know, as you mentioned, hey, we're still ironing out the kinks. Is that like a break-fix mentality? Or is there a very forward-looking, future-focused perspective on like, all right, we need to take security more seriously? Or is it just kind of whack-a-mole right now? And I realize it's a big, broad philosophy question, but but what do you think? Uh, is Solana leading the race in that, or is there still more to do? So uh, the thing about blockchains is, there is they are really open to community feedback. Yeah. So uh, each blockchain has at least one official Discord channel or, mm -hmm. you know, um, any any other type of you know uh, social media platform they're using to communicate and talk to the user they have their own forum and and stuff they do meetups they do hackathons uh, i think the next one is in london nice. um and uh, so they they're really open to community feedback because ultimately they were created by people that were not paid for you know doing that um well the money came after yeah. they they succeeded kind of so solana for example they have this roadmap of features that they are trying to implement and it, and all those features are discussed by uh, the by the community i can like you can the best example is you can just go on solana's github and uh, just look at the sheer number of issues and pull requests that are submitted um on a daily basis 
and uh, like the community is actively participating in the discussion so they really shape how the network is going to look like and the the thing about it is that even though there is a core team that has you know the contributor and right access to the repository they still are open to what the community says because chances are that it's going to be someone with a say PhD in you know embedded systems in the community that you know uh, really likes Solana and you know they feel they can you know make make really good impact on how the chain is going to look like so uh, this is this is this is I believe the beauty of you know decentralized public systems that you know uh, everybody I mean yourself myself we can participate in, in, in how the future is going to look like that's very cool I, I, I really like that idea. Hey, you know, it's something that we can all be a part of. Uh, and I think it's fulfilling to see it come to life. And I think it's even more fulfilling when we see the successes of, hey, there was an issue, there was a flaw, but we fixed it. And now we're looking better for the future uh, and in improving the security posture. So super cool. Thank you so much, Peter. This has been awesome. I feel like I've learned something. I hope anyone listening in might have just felt the same. Uh, but thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me a slice of life on what you're up to at work at Halborn and what Solana is all about. So thanks again. Thank you, Joe. <laughs>